Hi friends, I'm Jess. Welcome to the Hex Library, where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. I have not been around for a few weeks, so we have a lot to talk about today. I will be doing my October haul, wrap up, and TBR takedown all in today's video which is especially fun because I haven't actually done my TBR takedown numbers. So you're going to know what they are on the screen and I'm going to have no clue by the end of this video where we actually are or if I need to unhaul anything. So I think we're good, but I could be very, very wrong. If you don't know, the TBR Takedown is a game I've been playing since 2019, trying to get my physical unread TBR shelf down from a very high number. I believe we started around 240, down to something more manageable, around 50. The game has changed a few times since then. It will be leaving us forever after this December, um, and we're gonna be doing something different in 2024. So I will be doing like a closeout video. Uh, I'm going to do an end of an era video um for the tbr takedown probably in january so if you have been here with me through the ride of the tbr takedown and it's something that you have enjoyed we're gonna do a little bit of like a flashback if you will but since we're here let's start with all of my books that i hauled it's a heckin ton so cool these are not in any particular order i don't know where they came from i don't know when i bought what i i bought a lot of books okay uh first we have survive the night by riley sager this is i think the book previous to the most recent one this was the only one that i had not read yet and i went ahead and picked it up because i planned to read it in october i did read it in october we'll talk about it later a little bit but yeah this is the only one i hadn't read yet this is considered to be riley's least favorite or least favorite this is everyone's least favorite Riley Sager book, I think, for the most part. This one I think is set in the 90s and is a girl in college trying to get a ride, do like a ride share back home. And there's a guy um, that offers her to ride share with her. But there was also a killer on campus who has known, been known to kill, I believe, at least three people. And so there's a possibility that he might be this killer. And so she has to survive the night. Our Last Echoes by Kate Alice Marshall. Again, I planned to read this in October. I didn't read this one. I'm, I don't know when I'm going to get to this one. I own the um, audio of it through Libro. And I was like, well, maybe if I buy the physical copy, it will push me more to read the book because I love Kate Alice Marshall. So the fact that I'm not reading it makes absolutely no sense. Um, but I still have not picked it up yet. So also, I don't know what that book's about. Another book that I don't know what it's about, Nothing More to Tell by Karen and McManus. I was talking about having read um, One of Us is Lying. And then I also this month read One of Us is Next, which we'll talk about again later in this video. And when I was talking about having read that and really enjoyed like the twist ending, uh, Malin told me that this was her favorite by Karen and McManus. So when I seen this, I went ahead and picked it up as well. Again, don't know what it's about. Uh, keep your head down and get your story straight. So I'm assuming it's much like all of the rest of them. Teenagers, somebody killed somebody, who done it? One of those, you know? We then have a twofer. We have Dark Waters and Dead Voices, both by Catherine Arden. These are books two and three, or two and three, I'm not sure which, uh, in the Small Spaces series which I read early in the month and really enjoyed. Did I read it this month or last month? I think I read it last month, right? It's up here already because I already read it. It is. Ooh, they're numbered on the side. So it's two and three. Look at that. Um, somebody actually numbered the spines of the books. Magic. So uh, this series, the first book starts off with a group of friends who go to a like a farm and there's scarecrows that are really creepy and there's like an old curse and they have to fight this big evil guy to save all of their classmates it was super creepy and fun and so I went ahead and picked up the next two books in the series um, I would have picked up the fourth as well but I prefer my mid-grade in paperback to hardback and it is a new release so it's not in paperback yet I then picked up a couple of Megan Collins books I picked up The Family Plot and The Red Door I read The Family Plot last year I believe um, and this, so this is like a family drama type of uh, murder mystery thriller. Let's go with that. Uh, Megan Collins is really big on like her murder mysteries are very family drama 
oriented. So usually it's a large family group and one of those family members is dead and one of those family members is the killer in one way or another, typically. Not always, but typically. Um, so I had read this one and I really enjoyed it and I hadn't picked up a copy yet. And I also um, have not read Behind the Red Door. And I believe this was her debut. No, The Winter Sister was her debut, which I got from Book of the Month. I think that was actually my first Book of the Month book. So I haven't read Behind the Red Door yet. Have read The Family Plot. We'll talk about another one of her books later. I do know that I got these two from the local indie. Um, that was uh, Small Horrors by Darcy Coates, which is a collection of short stories by Darcy Coates, whom is the queen, and I love her, of all of the things dark and creepy. I also picked up Big Little Spells by Hazel Beck. I probably should have checked to see if this was a sequel to Small Big Town, nope, Small Town Big Magic, um, but I didn't check that, and I should check that. Um, but I was looking at witchy books for Halloween and they had this one at the local bookshop and I loved the cover and it sounded interesting. Rebecca was 18 when she left whatever town this is, officially stripped of her magic and banished from her home. 10 years later, she's forced to return to face the Joywood Coven who preside over not just her hometown, but the whole magical world. Rebecca's happy to reunite with her sister and with her friends, but the implications of her return are darker and more dangerous than they could have imagined. Blah, 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 all of the things. So um, I wanted to pick, so I wanted to pick this one up, check it out. Probably should check and make sure that this isn't a sequel to Small Town Big Magic. If it is, I may have just spoiled all of us. <laughs> okay, so it turns out that is a sequel to Small Town Big Magic, um, but it doesn't, appears to be like a companion, not a direct sequel. So hopefully I didn't spoil any of us. I don't think I did. All of the names seem different, but also that book has a really low rating on Goodreads and I am now officially scared. <laughs> I also picked up Scary Stories to Tell in the Dark by Alvin Schwartz. Um, these I think came out when I was much younger than I am today. Um, does it tell me when the original copyright? Uh, prior to my birth, text copyright 1981. I was not yet born, um, but I do remember these from when I was a kid. And I seen a copy of them very, I think this was like $2. And most of them are like one to maybe four page little stories. Um, most of them have like a picture and then just a short story. And so I picked this up as something fun to read um, when I need something short for a readathon and also just for like nostalgia vibes. Daughter of the Deep by Rick Riordan. I honestly don't actually know what this one's about. And as a freshman at Harding Pencroft Academy, a five-year high school that graduates the best marine scientists, naval warriors, navigators, and underwater explorers in the world. And his parents died while on a scientific expedition two years ago, and the only family she's got left is her older brother, Deb, who's also a student at HP. And this freshman year culminates with the class's weekend trial at sea and the details of which have been kept secret. She only hopes she has what it'll take to succeed. All her worries are blown out of the water when on the bus ride to the ship, Anna and her schoolmates witness a terrible tragedy that will change the trajectory of their lives. That's a lot. But wait, there's more. <laughs> okay. Uh, the professor accompanying them informs Anna that HP has been fighting a cold war against its rival school, Land Institute, for 150 years. Now that Cold War has been turned up to a full boil, the freshmen are in danger of becoming fish food. In a race against deadly enemies, Anna will make amazing friends and astounding discoveries, but her heritage, no, about her heritage as she puts her leadership skills to the test for the first time. I have no clue, but it's Ray Cryer and it's mid-grade and you know I love it, so I picked it up. A book that I actually read last month but hauled this month is The Odds by Lindsay Puckett. Uh, Lindsay is a friend of mine and a fellow author tuber and I will link her channel in the description box down below for you. Um, but this book follows our main character Begonia aka Bug who lives with a bunch of old people who she calls her grandparents. She was an orphan and they live in the odd part of society. She is a few days away from her 11th birthday and if you don't get your oddity by your 11th birthday you get removed from the odd society and your memories are wiped and so she's trying to figure out how to get her oddity and then not be wiped from the memories of her grandparents and also her lose the memory of everyone she's ever known and she gets a prickly side character. Actually she's prickly, he's nice. She's a very prickly lady and I love her. Um, and this book is signed because I threw it at Lindsay and made her sign it. Legitimately across the table. <laughs> Cause I'm a good friend like that. Also a book that I read last month, I think, 
You, Me, and the Nightmare Painter by Brandon Sanderson. Um, I had to have this copy. I loved this book so much and I mean, come on. I could have got the regular US edition that's why it has Yumi and the painter on the front of it. But I was like, you know, this cover is gorgeous. Does it match my white cover Brandon Sanderson's? No, it doesn't. But it's gorgeous and I love it and I had to have it. For my local store's book club in November, we are reading The Blue Book of Nebo by Manon Stefan Ross. And so obviously I picked up a copy of that. It's very short. It is set post-apocalyptic after um, like a nuclear apocalypse. And it's a mother and son who are writing in this journal. Um, they're, uh, they've agreed not to read each other's parts in the journal. Um, so they're just each writing in the journal. And we're seeing their story of how they've survived after nuclear fallout. A book that I read in October and we'll talk about later and also I loved, The Bone Houses by Emily Lloyd-Jones. This was recommended to me by Mars from Somber Honey Books and like mm, last year at the very least, maybe the year before. I loved this book. It was fantastic. It was wonderful. It was glorious. This follows our main character, Ren, who is part of a family of gravediggers. Their parents have died and she has taken on as the oldest the job of being a gravedigger. But in this town, because <laughs> the bone houses, which are actually people, their bodies after they have died, because they are starting to come back to life. They have instead decided to start burning more bodies than they are burying and therefore her and her brother and her sister are starting to go hungry um, and are not able to afford to pay for this house that her family has lived in for generations because that's their only way to make the monies. And she meets Ellis who is a local map maker and together they set out to do um, to find out what's causing the bone houses to be more active than they've ever been in the past. And it's just like this adventure and it is a fantastic read and we'll talk about it later, but that's what it is. Also a book that I hauled this month and also read this month, uh, The Witch is Back by Sophie H. Morgan. I had an arc of this. I read it late as per usual, uh, this year and I really enjoyed it. It is a second chance romance. Um, you really have to have, for me, with second chance romances, there really has to be a good reason why the couple split up in the first place for me to agree to being okay with them having a second chance romance. And for this couple, I do. I, I agree with like the reason the decisions were made. I understand why he came back. There's a lot of things in there, but it's involves some magic. It's, it's typical. Like if you liked the X hex, if you liked, uh, not the witch you wed, uh, a witch's guide to fake dating a demon. If you like those kind of like witchy rom-coms, then you'll like this one too. And the last books that we have to talk about are books one through 10 of the Twitches series um, by H.B. Gilmore and Randy Reisfeld. I think that says Reisfeld. Um, yeah, books one through 10. One through 10, or is it 11? I think it's 10, it's 10. Okay, as mentioned, earlier this year, I um, hauled a 10 book series, a 12, a 13, a 15, a 15 book series um, that I had never heard of before. It is 13 books. I don't remember how many it is. Okay. I, I hauled the circle of three books. I don't know how many there are in that series, um, but they're from the late 90s, early 2000s. These are also from the late 90s, early 2000s. I also have all 15 books of the sweep series, which was also late 90s, early 2000s. So I am going to be making some reading vlogs. And somebody had most of these from one seller on eBay. And then I just kind of had to dig around for the last couple. If you don't know, Disney's made a movie about these that I love, that I know is very different than the books, obviously, because they made two movies out of 10 books. So I'm guessing there's going to be some differences, but I am excited to get to these projects for next October. Okay, now we're gonna get to the wrap up portion of this. So first, my stats, I'm doing little stats this month because again, I'm behind. I read 20 books, I DNF'd seven, I'm also unhauling a few others. I read a total of 5,842 pages and my average rating was a 3.95 and that is without the DNFs and unhauls um, because I actually had a pretty good reading month despite the fact that I DNF'd seven books but neither here nor there. 
I did do a mid-month wrap-up live show and I do need to go back to that and put in timestamps for where I was talking about the books and I will do that after I film this. Um, but I, I did do a live stream wrap up and I actually ended up talking about all of the books that I DNF'd during that live stream because I read all of them earlier in the month. I went through, I think the first 20 books and then I think there's like seven that we didn't get to, um, cause I hadn't read them yet. So let's go through this stack of books that I am DNFing and or unhauling. Again, I'm going to give you like a little bit of basic about why I'm unhauling it. But if you want to know more of like my full thoughts, you can check out the mid month wrap up. Uh, the Bone Witch by Ren Chapeco. I read 25-ish percent of this, had no clue what was going on, didn't care what was going on. Forest Fall by Lyndall Clipstone. This is the second book in the series. I will be keeping the first book, which is Lake Sedge, because I loved that book. Um, I DNF'd this pretty early in, maybe 15%. <laughs> it's very much a Stockholm Syndrome love triangle, and I'm not here for that, so I DNF'd it. Just Another Missing Person by Jillian McAllister. I read another book by Jillian earlier this year and loved it. Um, this book, no clue what was happening. I read the first 25% of this book three times and still had zero clue what was happening, who anyone was, what the mystery was. I had no clue, no clue. And so I was just done. I also DNF'd My Roommate is a Vampire, which I had an arc of. And no, it was bad. It, was, it wasn't even good bad. It was just bad bad. Wishful Thinking by Celestine Martin. Um, again, didn't vibe with it. It is a witchy uh, mermaid -y story. Just wasn't the vibe. I also DNF'd The Young Elites by Marie Lu, which means I'm also getting rid of The Rose Society and The Midnight Star. Because why would I read books two and three if I DNF'd the first book? I honestly don't even remember why I DNF'd these. Like they are so far out of my mind at this point. I read them or I didn't read them. I tried to read the first book, didn't like it, they're gone. In a similar vein, Rebel of the Sands uh, and Traitor to the Throne. Again, tried reading it, didn't like it. Don't remember what I didn't like about it because it's been up over a month since I read them. Um, but I did talk about them again in the wrap up video, um, mid month wrap up, I should say. Uh, next was a book that was a book club book for my local bookstore. Um, and that is Foul Eulogies by Lucy Rico. So I missed this month's uh, book club, not because I hadn't read the book, but because I was sick and because I knew I was sick, I knew I wasn't going to get to the bookstore to read it so, or to sit for the book club. So I was, didn't worry about it. And I was like, I'll just read it later. Last month at book club, we were talking about like, we always compare the books to like books we read earlier in the year. And I had mentioned that I hadn't read this one yet. And everyone was like, don't, just don't, don't do it. It's bad. It's a bad idea. You'll never be able to eat a chicken again. Um, don't, don't do the things. You'll never look at chicken fingers the same way again. And I was like, you know, I'm just going to take y'all's word for it. And I'm just not going to read this one. So we're just going to unhaul it. And then the other that I just kind of made like a fly by the seat of my pants decision about was Shed No Tears by Kaz Freer. Um, I read the second book earlier this year and I was really not happy with it. And I, when I finished it, because the first book was just okay. Um, the second book was a little less okay. And by the time I got to Shed No Tears, I was like, I don't really care about what's happening in the story because there's the romance plot annoys me so much, like makes me so viscerally angry. So I read through some reviews to see if like what the character has been going through with the romance plot is still happening in book three. And it definitely is. And people have said that it is kind of like a carry over through the series. And I'm I'm not okay with it. And so I'm just not going to read any more in the series because I can't handle what's happening in that situation. So also unhauling this book. Okay. And now we can actually talk about the books that I read. Uh, these will be in order of lowest to highest rated. If I've already talked about it in the mid month wrap up, I will tell you that. And if I haven't, then we'll talk about as much as I remember about it. At the bottom at 2.5 out of five stars, we have Terror Behind the Mask by PJ Knight. This is book 19 of the Creepover series and this I talked about in the mid-month wrap-up. At 2.75 out of 5 stars we have The Book of Witches which is a collection or anthology and I talked about that in the mid-month wrap-up as well. Um, some books were five stars, some books were not five stars. We're going to talk about these next two together at, at four stars which is why this is a little weird. Uh, we have A Perfect Storm which is book 10 in the Sarah Normal series but at 
three stars, which is how it gets to where it is. We have the final book in the Sarah Normal series, book 11, Yesterday and Today. Um, and I talked about these in the Midnight Wrap Up as well. Next, at a 3.5 out of 5 stars, we have The Blue Book of Nebo by Manon Stefan Ross. Again, we just talked about this one. It is a mother and son writing in the same notebook um, after a chemical uh, nuclear end of the world situation. It does father it does follow a mother and son after a chemical nuclear war type situation or nuclear fallout situation. I don't think there was a war, just something happened at a chemical plant. Um, we never really find out like if there was anything like in the surrounding areas, if everything there was okay, or if it was like a massive amount of not okay. There are other people who are alive after the end of the world, if you will, but it really is just like a day in the life of learning about this mother and son and how they have survived um, since everything happened and the mother talking about things from before the change and the son talking about things after and then a little bit of um, the two of them talking about things together. Um, it was a good book but not great. We then have Thicker Than Water by Megan Collins. That was a 3.5 out of 5 stars. I did enjoy that one. Um, as mentioned, I have been reading a lot of Megan Collins's work. This one follows a woman and her sister-in-law, so like her husband's sister. Um, they are best friends and the brother slash husband um, is suspected of having murdered his boss. And so we see the story of like how everything actually happened, who the killer is. Um, and it's really these two women, you know, the wife saying, well, I believe he could have done it. And the sister saying, I don't think he ever could have done something like that. And so it's the two of them like trying to situate their relationship around having opposing opinions about what actually happened um, with their brother slash husband and his boss. And so, as I said, Megan Collins really is about like the family drama of a murder mystery. So if you like those kind of things, you will probably like that book as well. Then it had 3.75 out of 5 stars. We have The Night House by Joe Nesbo. And I did talk about that in the mid-month wrap-up. Also talked about in the mid-month wrap-up, we have The Escape Room by Megan Golden. Not Megan Collins, Megan Golden, which I gave a 4 out of 5 stars. Also in the mid-month wrap-up, The Whisper Man by Alex Knorr. I gave this a 4 out of five stars. At a four out of five stars, but not talked about in the mid-month wrap-up, we have Your Worst Nightmare by PJ Knight. This is book 17 in the Creepover series. This is one of my favorites of the series. It was really good. Um, it involves the kids going on a field trip to a cave and they go in the cave and they all have to face their worst nightmare. It was very interesting, very good, and I liked it. At 4.5 out of two five stars, we have The Haunting of Lee Harker, which we talked about in the mid-month wrap-up. Also at a 4.25 and also talked about in the mid-month wrap-up, we have None of This is True by Lisa Jewell. My most sincere apologies if we just moved. Next we have Witches by Brenda Lozano and I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. This is set in Latin America and follows two main characters, Feliciana and Zoe. Zoe is a journalist and Feliciana is a um, spiritual healer who learned her craft from a family who has passed this craft down amongst the men in the family and she had a, an uncle who was known as Gaspar but during Feliciana's life Gaspar became Paloma and so um, Paloma has been murdered and that is the beginning of the story and the thing that this book really did that was interesting was that it swapped between point of views of Zoe and Feliciana but you don't know that at the beginning and so like each chapter is like a different point of view and it takes you a while to figure out that like their parents are different people and their siblings are different people and you're like okay this is two completely different stories um so once you get that part figured out I actually really enjoyed the story um as far as like the characterization and learning about the culture there's no real plot okay don't th there's no plot like the story starts with the death of Paloma and it ends with the death of Paloma and it it has zero plot and it's really uh Feliciana telling Zoe what to write about her and it says say this say all of what I'm saying to you say that it was six at night when Guadalupe came to tell me they killed Paloma say what you saw and what I told you Honor what you say, honor what your father said to you, just as I honor what mine said to me. Honor your work with the language, just as I honor my father, Felisberto, with what he gave me. Honor what your mother said to you, just as I honor what mine said to me. Anyway, I got distracted because the cat was trying to attack the scroll as it went across the bottom of the screen and I 
I have no clue what I was talking about. Anyway, the important thing to note is that I liked this book. And if you like stories about culture and about people, you will probably like this as well. She's back again. Survive the Night by Riley Sager. I gave this a 4.25 out of 5 stars. I know what you're thinking. Are you crazy? And the answer to that is yes. Yes, I am. I'm apparently the only person on the planet that I actually liked this book. Now, do I like it? Because I went into it knowing that everyone hated it. So my expectations were so low that it rose above those expectations. And then I rated it highly. I don't know. Also, I liked the plot twist ending. I thought it was really good. I didn't hate it. I wasn't mad about it. I liked it. I, nothing about this book pissed me off the way it pisses everybody else off. I don't know. I don't know what I missed or what everybody else missed or I, I don't know. Obviously, I'm in the minority here, but I actually really liked this book. So I don't know. At me. What, what are your opinions on Survive the Night? Um, because, I mean, I grasped the concept that the ending, the ending after the ending is like kind of a phone in a little bit um, when you learn like what actually happened. I grasp the concept that it's a little bit of a phone in, but also given the context of the story and about the main character, it makes so much sense for the story. And I like that aspect about it. So I don't know. You tell me, what did you not like about this? We then at 4.5 out of 5 stores have Extra Normal by Kate Alice Marshall, which I already talked about in the mid-month wrap up, as well as the Bone Houses at a 4.5 out of 5 stars, which we already talked about in the mid-month wrap-up. Also at a 4.5 out of 5 stars, we have The Haunting of Rookward House by Darcy Coates. This is one of my new favorites by Darcy. I really enjoyed this one. This, this book follows a man who is living with his mother following the separation from his wife, and whatever he did in the past, the entire town looks at him very negatively. Um, we don't learn until like the middle of the book what happened with him and his wife, but it follows him um, trying to figure out like a way to get out of the rut that he's in. It's hard for him to find a job because he lost his job after what happened with his wife. It's hard for him to find a new job because no one in the town likes him. And so him and his mother are cleaning out her attic and he finds a deed to a house that his mother kind of forgot that she owned because she came into possession of it when she was still a minor. And he's like, well, let's go check out this house. And I can fix it up if it's, you know, decent and we can sell it and then we could, you know, move somewhere where everybody doesn't know about this thing that I did. In traditional Darcy Coates fashion, it is a haunted house, of course, and he gets there and he learns about the history of the house, which is super fucking creepy and gave me the absolute chills. Um, I really enjoyed this one. It was super dark, super creepy, um, had a good twist ending. Um, there were like some parts that were really sad. Um, that I was like kind of upset that they happened, but I mean, that's kind of the part of the whole book. It's a horror after all, but yeah, it was a really good one. I really like this one. This is a favorite of Darcy's for me. We then have The Last Word by Taylor Adams, uh, as a 4.75 out of 5 stars. We did talk about this one in the mid-month wrap-up and I saved this one that we didn't talk about in the mid-month wrap-up for the final one at a 4.75 out of 5 stars. We have One of Us is Next by Karen and McManus. This is the sequel to One of Us is Lying. So this book follows Maeve, who is the younger sister of one of the four main characters from the first book, her best friend Knox, and Phoebe, who I also think is seen in the first book, but I could be wrong. And there's you have the original four in here. They are definitely here, some more than others. Um, Bronwyn, which is Maeve's older sister, you see a lot of. Um, some of the others you see less of. Um, but same deal. Someone has recreated a site like Simon had where they talked about all the gossip at Bayview High, I believe is the name of the school. They decide to do a truth or dare and basically they send a text that says truth or dare they give them a dare and they say if you don't do this dare then I'm going to tell a truth about you. Phoebe is the first one to get the truth or dare. She thinks it's a joke because no one else has had it at this point and so she doesn't do anything and a truth about her comes out. Things start to happen after that and it gets real weird and real deadly and at the end you think you know who was behind everything and what happened but there is a plot twist at the very end of this book that is quite possibly the best plot twist I've ever read in a book ever. Not just a YA book, but a book period because of the nature of the plot twist. Because it's one of those things where it happens and you're like, 
I don't know how I'm supposed to feel about that. You know, plot twists, a lot of times, like, a plot twist will happen and you'll be like, that was a good plot twist. They really came up with that. Like, they, you know, they laid the breadcrumbs for that one and it was real good and I really liked it or it was really bad. But, like, you know how it makes you feel. This one's one where, like, I feel, like, amazed that that was, like, part of the plot because I never would have thought of that. But also horrified at it. But also curious as to how that's going to affect things further along in the series. And so it's like, I don't know how to feel because I have a lot of feelings bound up in that one particular thing. So this book was really good. I definitely want to pick up the next book in this trilogy. I think it's a trilogy. I want to pick up the next book soon. Um, I had a fantastic time reading this. So yeah, over here, over here at the top. I don't know where the numbers are this time because I was not planning ahead. I don't even know what we started at. I don't know where we ended at. Um, basically we're just here because I needed it to film and, uh, I, I'm struggling this month, okay? I'm really struggling with all of the things this month. But I had a huge haul and I read a lot of books and I knew if I didn't get this out soon, it would never happen. And quite frankly, all of the books you've just seen have been sitting on my desk since the end of October and I'm tired of looking at them. So I really just needed to get everything off of my desk. We have numbers. I did not get to um, title which was the book for October, I think. Well, I don't know. Whatever month I pulled this for, I still haven't got to it yet, but it is on my self-destruct by the end of the year list, so I'll either get to it or I won't. I'm not going to pull another book from the jar uh, because at this point, the month's already almost over and I've already decided that I'm going to do a new thing next year. And so I know that I'm not going to get my books down as far as I wanted to get them down originally because 12 of the, like I wanted to get down to 25 and 12 books. I decided to carry over um, the 12 books from the sweep series. I decided to carry those over to do for the reading vlog for next October. So I'm already cutting myself in half at what I'm allowed to carry over for next year. So Honestly, at this point, I mean, we're, we'll definitely talk about this more when we talk about um, the end of the era in January, but I'm honestly having days where I'm looking at my shelves going, I don't have anything I want to read. Because despite the fact that I do have like 80 some books on my physical TBR, you have to think that 40 of those are books for the reading vlogs for next October literally 40 of them so then you're looking at I've got 40 books left okay cool but how many of those are parts of series a good portion of them so then you're down to about 20 or so books that are actually books that are either the first book in a series or a standalone so when I go to my shelves I'm like I really don't have much to choose from to read I definitely think 50 is not an attainable number for me not at where I am now with what I have. So we're definitely going to be re trying to figure out what our goal is for the future for TBR Takedown because I don't want to get back to 240. There is no world wherein I want to get back to that. Um, but I do think I want to make a cap of how many books I keep on my shelf. So let me know in the comments below what you think would be a good number. Knowing that I have 40 books that I'm going to be trying to read next year for vlogs in October and also like I said many books that I have are complete series where some of them there's five books in a series knowing that I like to buy whole series at one time so technically yes they're on my physical TBR but like I can't like read whichever one I want I have to read the first one I mean I can but that would be stupid what do you think is like a reasonable number like do you think 50 is reasonable do you think it's 75 do you think it's 100 do you think it's 200 like what do you think is like I don't have a space issue, obviously. I've got, I've got the space. Space is not the problem. The problem is that we got to 240 books and I ended up unhauling a lot of those 240 books because by the time I got around to most of them, they were not books I was interested in anymore. Like my reading tastes have completely changed over the last four years. And I don't want to be in that position again where I buy a bunch of books and then my reading tastes change again and I'm not interested in those books four years from now. So let me know, what do you think is a good number? I'm interested to see what you guys think. Also, if you made it this far in the video, leave me a kitty cat emoji down below. Mostly because again, I was watching Raja play with the scrolling bar across the bottom of the live stream and it made me laugh. 
So that is all I have for today. Again, I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple times a week. If you don't want to miss anything I have going on in the future, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell down below. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!